Precision medicine is changing the way we treat cancer. Our role in histology, staging, and biomarker testing puts today's pathologists at the epicenter of the treatment selection process, which can directly impact clinical outcomes. Last I checked, there were over 2,600 biomarker-driven oncology trials underway on clinicaltrials.gov. So I think it's pretty clear that precision medicine is here to stay. As gatekeepers of the tissue, Decisions we make in the pre-analytical phase lay the groundwork for histology and future biomarker testing. Methods in which tissue is obtained for diagnosis prior to ultimate management can help ensure sufficient tissue acquisition. One such method is rapid on-site evaluation, or ROSE. Spending this extra time up front can save the team from wasting valuable time and resources on repeat biopsies and can spare patients unnecessary burden. Appropriate quantity and quality of tissue can ensure accurate test results, which are critical to helping inform key clinical decisions. That's why following established tumor-specific guidelines is so essential. When we're all on the same page, the whole process goes a lot more smoothly. Once we have sufficient tissue, the next step is to make sure it's handled properly. It has been shown that prolonged ischemic time, overfixation and underfixation may compromise tissue integrity. For some types of samples, studies have shown that significant changes can occur after just 30 minutes of cold ischemic time. That's why standardization is so important. But it's not just about the quality of the tissue, it's also about strategic tissue management, which brings us to the subject of tissue cutting and embedding. I'm always thinking about how to preserve as much tissue as possible to allow for downstream testing needs. Since we deal with various specimen types and sizes, it's so important to have a well-thought-out strategy that allows for both diagnosis and molecular testing. In specimens that may provide multiple tissue samples, one approach is to separate tissue into multiple blocks for histology and molecular testing. If only a single block is available, an alternative approach is to cut additional unstained slides up front to avoid tissue exhaustion. The pathologist's role extends far beyond the initial diagnosis. Ultimately, we are responsible for patient tissue, which is representative of the patients themselves. It is our job to treat the tissue with the respect that we would afford patients and to assure appropriate handling for immediate and downstream testing needs. However, we aren't the only ones involved in the patient tissue journey. There are many providers involved in the pre-analytical phase who work together and share ownership of the process, from the courier to the clinician. But due to our central role in the patient tissue journey, our colleagues are relying on us to usher in this new era of biomarker testing. In some cases, we'll have to take the initiative to implement standard processes and educate our colleagues on the importance of preserving tissue samples. Even just providing basic information, such as contact information and where the formalin is located, can go a long way in ensuring effective management of patient tissue. As pathologists, our efforts to standardize processes throughout the patient tissue journey may optimize patient care both today and tomorrow, because the pre-analytical phase plays an important role in precision medicine and is a potential pathway to improving patient outcomes. <laughs>